Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today we got some breaking news as it is a pretty big day for crypto with a ton of important info that you need to have. So make sure you watch this video all the way through so you don't miss out on any of this important info. And a little bit of a hint, Ethereum is up like 13%, XRP up like 5 Bitcoin 2 Bitcoin Cash 3 Chainlink 8 It's really a positive day and... Uh, well, my question of today is which coins do you hold, right? So not just put one, but put all the coins you hold, uh, at least your top five, that is. And let's discuss down below which ones are the best. Now, one of the big pieces of news, most likely the biggest of today, is adoption. U.S. banks allowed to hold Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple XRP for customers. Pretty big, right? I mean, this is no joke. This is no small feat. This is some huge ass stuff. A new legal clarification in the USA allows all licensed banks in the USA to offer custody services for crypto. This step could involve a major wave of adoption, as custody has so far been reserved for specialist companies with a special license such as Coinbase or Gemini. And now, I've been seeing a lot of people over on Twitter being really, really happy with all of this, as, again, they may now all hold some crypto, which could be really, really positive for all of us. The secure custody of crypto is enormously important for the progress of adoption and the confidence of the population in digital currencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, or XRP. In the United States of America, it was previously reserved for companies such as Coinbase or Gemini to store crypto for their customers. Until now, a government license was required to offer this service. Now, I guess that's kind of gone away, or at least a lot of these other banks and whatnot have have approved i guess or gotten such a license even though the license has now changed a little bit um because you can see here the office of controller of the currency occ has now published a new letter that clarifies that all licensed banks in the u.s are allowed to offer custodial services for crypto which is just all positive stuff guys nothing crazy in a bad way it's just all good stuff all all, all good you can check the whole letter out if you want I don't really know exactly what you should fetch from it, but it's really positive. It just shows, again, another really big step for crypto as the mainstream adoption is coming closer and closer, inching closer every single day. And that's what I've been telling you guys about. Really, really excited for, uh, I guess, the huge things that could be coming. But um, I guess it's all piece by piece, guys. It's all piece by piece. This adds an important service for the range of services offered by banks, which could have far-reaching implications for the crypto industry. The letter states that the safekeeping of crypto differs in several respects from the traditional custody services, as crypto do not exist materially, but only on the blockchain. To quote, the OCC recognizes that, as the financial markets become increasingly technological, there will likely be increasing need for banks and other service providers to leverage new technology and innovative ways to provide traditional services on behalf of customers. Banks should be allowed to offer both fiduciary or fiducia, and non-trusty custody services. The letter also specifies that banks must implement appropriate security measures to ensure the safe custody of customers' assets. Quote, the letter reaffirms, reaffirms that OCC's position that national banks may provide permissible banking service to any lawful business they choose, including crypto businesses, so long as they effectively manage the risks and comply with the applicable role. So all good stuff, guys. I'm really, really happy. And last quote of the day, the OCC letter is a positive development for the entire crypto industry. A lack of regulatory clarity has been a big roadblock to more institutional activity in crypto and major pronouncements like this help move the needle. All right, then I guess another big piece of news that's really just from today is YouTube rebuffs Ripple's lawsuit over XRP scams, seeks dismissal. So again, when we're talking about that, this is not a small feat, just so y'all know. Ripple thinks that the video sharing platform isn't doing enough to stop impersonators, but YouTube says it is not their responsibility. So of course, that is a ball that kept going back and forth for a very long time, as again, who is really to blame and who can, who can decide, right? Now, a lot of you guys in the comment section at least try to, with me, come to a conclusion as to who would be right and why and whatnot. Basically, one of the things we noted and that we, 
I guess, discussed publicly, is that, oh, YouTube is, is really not doing the best they can. <laughs> they could really do a lot more if they want to do. And yeah, that's one of the main points that we've been making. So now to that and with that, a lot of these guys are trying to sue them. So yes, you can see here, Apple co-founder and 17 others joined Ripple to sue YouTube over incessant Bitcoin giveaway scam. And here in specific, Steve Wozniak sues Google for not acting on YouTube Bitcoin scams. He said the service has been unapologetically unap hosting and directly profiting from similar scams. And so now these guys are all popping in, hopping over to make sure these guys, um, well, I guess get taken down. And basically they used his name somewhere. He did not like it. He's filing for damages. And uh, 17 others are doing the same thing. They went to court to force YouTube and parent company Alphabet to take the videos down and warn users about the scam while seeking compensation and punitive damages. Uh, and the gadget has reached out for comments from Wozniak and Alphabet, but I guess nothing much has come from all of that just quite yet. Much as with Twitter, the YouTube scams use Wozniak's image to persuade users that they would double any Bitcoins they send him when users transfer their crypto in an irreversible transaction, they receive nothing back according to the lawsuit. So of course, that's the bad part about it. Once you send money in that to a, to a person you think you know or that you think that's an authority, you don't get any back. You don't get anything back at all. It's just a big F you to the face, which is again, something that a lot of people don't like. I mean, for a, <laughs> for a pretty good reason so as well, as again, you send some money away and you get nothing back. And nobody thinks that's fun, right? But yeah. All right, having said that though, I mean, that's a very bad part, but the losses are continuing and Ripple is now sending a lot stronger, which is really, really positive. Something else that's really kind of sad is going on on the other side of the world over in, I guess, uh, Mongolia, I believe, or somewhere, maybe like China, something along the, that area right there. Bitmaze's Jihan Wu forged shareholders' decision and staged mob attack, according to ousted co-founder. Bitmaze's power struggle gets nastier with co-founder Jian Wu being accused of an illegal coup, which is one part of this all, but that came out a little bit earlier. What came out now is that 10,000 ASICs di disappear from Bit Bitmaze's mining farm. And as you can see here, already a couple weeks ago, it was kind of, you know, already out there that staged mob attacks and all that type of stuff was going on already. Uh, back in May, John managed to win back his status of Bitmaze's legal representative, but an attempt to get a new registration license was followed by a physical confrontation with the company's legal representative, Liu Yao Liu. Liu Yao was reportedly arrested after trying to take possession of the license together with her mob at the local Justice Bureau. In his announcement, Zan claims that Wu was the one who st staged the attack, which is uh, one thing. Illegal coup is what he did. All, all just really sketchy stuff, right? And now also 10,000 A6 disappearing. So a lot of people are saying, don't support this company as you really don't know what you're going to be getting, which is something that I uh, can get behind a little bit there. I'm like, it's a pretty sketchy company at this point here, and I... I might also not want to support it too much. I do get that. And at the bottom here, you can also see, be careful what you buy. Like, don't buy um, these these miners is what they're saying because, well, you might be getting some outdated stuff or you might be this, you might be that. They might be using your information to send things further, which which is all uh, not good. They may be yada, yada, yada. And also, again, there's a little bit of a war going on between some other companies out there using these miners. And they're saying stay clear of that by not getting involved right now. Ripple analysis, watching bullish flag pattern. Nothing much to say there. I mean, the XP price is doing pretty good. So what else should we cover, right? In that regard, like what else do you want to know about? Bitfinex will doubt Ethereum will ever revisit its all-time high of $1,400. Well, in my opinion, $1,400 is just the start for Ethereum. However, it may take a very long time as, I mean, the 14% gains of today are already a pretty big feat, right? I think some people are already really, really happy with that. But I don't know exactly how much you can do in just this small time period. I mean, you know, it, it's already a good start. And we don't want to take it too far. Otherwise, it's going to all fall back down. So it needs to be built up correctly. Or at least it needs to be built up well. So we don't, I guess, you know, just lose too much over the longer period. You guys get me right there, right? If it goes too quick, you're going to lose all your gains again. So it needs to go slowly. 
Buy Investors, UK's first regulated crypto hedge fund closes down. Now, even though the rest of this was all positive for crypto, this is directly and, and pretty obviously a very, very bad thing. Prime Factor Capital was the first crypto-oriented hedge fund to get a license by UK regulators. The fund struggled to attract investors since launching in 2018, and the founders canceled the license and are now dismantling the business, as I guess they don't really they don't really get much, right? They've tried their best, but it wasn't really going too well. Uh, and thus, I guess they've, they've moved on to something else. Now, the rest of this article is kind of an analysis on really a part institutional money but uh, the majority of the part is just crypto hedge funds and those all around the world but i guess the uk didn't work out doesn't mean it won't work out in the future but maybe the people investing are not too happy with it yet or not trusting enough or maybe the company didn't do the marketing well or things like that or didn't have a good plan banks cannot hold bitcoin here's why it's insanely bullish well we all i think understand why it is extremely extremely bullish barry silbert says i'm looking forward to getting my ass kissed by all the banks now. I like that statement. Barry Silver, the co-founder and CEO of Digital Currency Group, the parent company of Grayscale Investments and Genesis Trading, took to Twitter to share the pleasure of this development. As again, the connection between banks and crypto is going to get positive now, which is really, really crazy, really, really good. And um, Su Tzu says, U.S. banks being able to offer custody is insanely bullish because it means that guys like Signature or Silvergate could onboard fiat deposits, convert to stablecoin, get yield in DeFi, Incubants will see this growth and then join. It gives a business model for crypto custodians, finally. And last but not least, Wills moved 700,000 Ethereum just before Ethereum broke $250. Well, is that to do with the price? Does that really help? I don't know. I don't know exactly what it was for or what, what really happened here. What I do know, though, is that guys are heavily trying to manipulate Ethereum and it will eventually cost you your neck if you're not careful. Here it says, three days before Ethereum broke $250, Wales moved 700,000 Ethereum. The move could signal a pending top for Ethereum, and Wales are orchestrating an exit. Ethereum opened the week at 334 right now. It is at 270 or something like that. But just a little bit before, Wales were pumping it in, which um, is about $182 million. It was likely pre-pump, and that might be what's, what's doing all of this. More questions are there, but we really don't know. But guys, that was it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video.